Okay guys, I saw this picture of this little pocket folding knife um, on the internet last night and I thought I was going to give it a go. It's very, very simple. 8mm um, round for the handle and then I'm going to use this bit of um, rasp that I had left over from my big knife. Um, you could always use just a bit of mild steel, I think that's what they did in the, the original. Um, and it's just a little pocket knife. So what I'm going to do is start off with the 8mm round, just flatten the very end um, and make it into a little sort of round button and that's what's going to hold the blade. Then I'll work out how long it's got to be and flatten uh, a little bit on the end. You'll see why as I go along. Alright, just a half inch over the edge of the anvil and going to make it relatively thin. It doesn't need an awful lot of strength. And that's sort of basically it, just a little round button on the end. I'm just going to get another heat and take those corners off. Not that I really need to, but I'm going to anyway. Just tidy it up over the rounded edge so you don't get damage in your shoulders. Flatten it out. Can't quite work out whether it needs a step in it or not. So I'm going to do part and part. And that bit is where the blade is going to be riveted on. So that's about it. So now what I've got to do is work out how long I need it. Cut it down. Alright, so I've cut it down to about 8 inches I worked out. And I'm just going to flatten this end. But I want to keep it round at the top, which is why I'm using this. You don't have to, but because I've got it, I'm going to. You want it flat at the bottom there. You can see it's still round at the top, flat underneath. Um, that's where the the blade is going to sort of locate, where it's going to come up to. So you want it square, really, so that it doesn't go past it. Now I'm going to put a groove in here where I hope the blade's going to go. And I'm not sure whether to put it in that big one or the small one. I think the big one... It's going to be too big really. I'm just going to use a cross pane hammer to put a, a little groove down there which hopefully will be where the blade will sit when it's closed. I've decided that the big one's too big so I'm going to use the small one and I've got a smaller cross pane hammer here and I shall be hitting it with a, a copper mallet. You're not going to hit this with a, another hammer. You don't hit hard faces to hard faces, otherwise you'll end up with a face full of shrapnel, because they will shatter. So I'm just hitting that with a copper mallet, running a groove down there. It's a little bit thick, or wide, the groove, but it'll do. And I'm not going to go quite to the end, because that's where the, the uh, blade is going to stop. Not bad. I'm just going to make it a little bit longer further back. So I'll start again right from the beginning. Just run it back. See how cold, how quickly it goes cold. I just want to move this along a little bit. Get another couple of notches. That's it. There we go, I've lost it. But you can see the general idea. And I think that will probably do me for now. Right. 
I've worked out that this, where the rivet goes, needs to be kinked up a little bit when it's the whole thing's bent round. Um, it's going to get in the way if it's not kinked up slightly. Not a lot, just a few degrees. Can always do it more. We're going to bend it round, and that's going to come up to the the flattened end that I've already done. Right, they should be at 90 degrees to each other. So the flattened end and the little sort of penny on the end are at 90 degrees to each other. You just want to pull them round so that the the penny sort of comes towards the groove. And you can see there that the one end's far too long. So I'm just going to pull it round or push it round a bit further down and then pull it round this way. Sorry I haven't got the camera quite in the right place but you get the idea. You see they're coming up a bit better. So get it warm again. This light stuff goes cold quite quickly and it's flaming freezing here so just tap it around a bit more. You can see it coming up. Gone a bit past it so knock it back. Level it up. see they're a lot closer now but this is a bit wide I don't want that too wide because that's where you're going to hold it so I'm going to close that up and bring that penny up towards the groove all right give it a brush up get all the rubbish off I'm just going to gently tap that down See how easy it moves. It's it's pretty lightweight stuff. This eight mil. But you can see, having done that, it's moved it. So I'm just going to tap it round again. And it's bringing it closer together. The two ends. It's still not right. So what I need to do is tap this back a bit. And you see, I haven't moved this up enough. So I will have to sort of knock that down a bit more. Um, the idea is I'll have to put a kink in it so that the blade, which actually goes on the other side from what we're looking at, um, can sit up flush to the top. Otherwise it will just pass it. I'm not making much sense, but you'll, you'll understand once I've done it. I've got to put the hole in there, but I'm not going to do that until I've done the blade. You see how thin it is, there's no point punching it, we'll just drill that. Because that's that's far too thin to punch. Right, I've put the kink in it, as you can see. And you'll probably realise why now, because when the blade's attached up here, it's it can then sit along that groove. So when it's closed, hopefully the, the top of the blade will go into that groove. But I don't know, never done one before, so we'll, we'll see. That's all I've done so far with that. I've just wire brushed it up, offset it, so that uh, it's quite a nice feel in the hand. We'll get the blade on there and see what happens. Alright, we're going to make the blade now. See if this little tiny bit's going to be enough. I'm going to draw it down in both directions because it's about a quarter of an inch thick. We're only going to need it sort of probably eighth of an inch thick. So we can stretch it out and see if it's going to be big enough for our job. I hope so. I don't really want to have to cut another bit. You can see how quickly something this small or thin cools. We're going to be taking lots of heat, thin it out, draw it down both ways. I don't want it to get too wide. I, I do need a bit of width at this end that I'm working on now because that's where it's going to join the, the handle and I'm going to have to take a little step down in it where, the, where it joins the handle. You can see how much longer it is already. And we've hardly done 
much at all. So thinning out, drawing out, thinning out, drawing out. Keep working it both directions. You can see it's, it's coming out quite quickly, even though it's going cold. I'm not going to forge this blade completely. I will probably leave it very rough and grind it to the desired shape. I just want to work on that end again now. I want to just narrow it down and, and make it a bit wider. So that's the end that's going to attach to the, the handle. So I want plenty of width there to play with. You see that's just made it a little bit wider but of course now the, the middle's a bit thicker. Just got to thin that down a bit more. Not only does it cool down very quickly but it heats up very quickly. That's getting there. I'm not going to be doing much more than that. I shall probably now just work down these edges to form the the sort of cutting edge uh, and then leave it at that. Right, now I'm working down the cutting edge. So I'm just going to put the basic edge in by it with hammer and then you can just see it there. I'll do the same the other side and then I'm going to Try it up against the the handle. I think we've got plenty. In fact, I think I might have to make it a bit shorter. There you can see, just working along that edge, thinning that out. A lot of people just grind that in, but I like to do it with a hammer to start with. And there you can see, it's just put the beginnings of it in. Now then, let's try it up against this handle. And you can see it's too long. So I will have to shorten this, this blade. And you can see there it's probably at least quarter of an inch or maybe three eighths of an inch, possibly even half an inch too long. So I shall chalk it up, grind it, take out the little notch up here for the where it sits up here. Um, and grind it by hand, or grind it rather than hammer it. Well, I've taken the notch out here, the grinder, I'm just going to file it up now. The notch has two sort of purposes. One, it brings the top of the knife, or top of the handle, more level with the, the blade and it acts as a bit of a stop although it can't go any anywhere once the once it hits the top of the, the handle but it just sort of sits nicer a bit more of a flowing line where the, the top of the handle hits in there you can see where I've sort of chalked roughly where I want to go with it um, because it is quite a bit too long I also going to round this end off, make that neater because that's where it's going to run around the handle when you fold it. Right, I've rounded off at the end, filed it up, drilled the hole, and what I actually did, I sort of uh, before I rounded it all off, um, I sort of put it together um, and clamped it then drilled it. I haven't got a rivet at the moment so I'm just going to use this the drill that I drilled it with just to sort of demonstrate if I can get it back together. And that's basically how it's going to sit. You can see where the top of the, the handle sits in that groove. It could have been a little bit 
um, deeper but that's where it's going to go at the moment it's a bit sloppy but that will tighten up you can see it's far too long still so what we've got to do is grind that up and tidy it up and then go on to the heat treating so we'll have a go at that All right, so I've ground it up to basically how I want it and I've just run over it with a sander and that's brought it down to the sort of shape and size I want so now after the sander I'm just going to go over it with a, a file and as you, you can see as I'm going across it where it's taking out the marks that I put in with the sander sand is a wonderful tool but they don't leave a good finish on something like this you really have to do quite a bit of it with a file um, and then if you're obviously if you're going to go for a mirror finish you've got to do it with the wet and dry but this one I'm going to leave very rough very rough and rustic looking I'm just going to go over it all it's all been sanded and I've got I think I've got a I'm not sure whether it's a 60 or an 80 grit on my flap discs which on every day iron work is comparatively smooth but on something like this it's it's actually quite quite rough so there we go let's take the worst of it off of the file I'm going to leave it like that bef until I heat treat it I learnt that on my big knife don't do too much performance before the heat treating because it uh, somewhat damages it right I've got it in the fire got it hot and we're just going to cool it out now in the oil well sorry about that but the camera battery went dead in the middle of doing that but there it is it's cooled out and you can see what it does and it sounds hard enough so that's that's hardened it so I'm just going to give it a quick rub up with a, probably the uh, wire brush and then we're going to heat treat it or uh, sorry we're going to temper it and I'll probably do that just with a blowtorch because it's so thin blowtorch will be fine so here we are we've got the blowtorch going just holding a pair of grips I'm going to work on the thickest parts first. You don't want to work on the the thin blade to start with because that will get too hot too quick. So you want to concentrate on your thick bits right up the top and by the, the handle. Obviously you want to work it around all over but concentrate on the thicker bits to start with. You can see already the tip has gone blue. Well, that's got too hot already or hot already now you can see it's coming from the handle end it's coming up blue and it's working its way down so I'm going to dunk that pretty quick work that round in the in the oil all right there we go that's done that I'm going to clean that up wire brush it and start assembling it see what it looks like right I've got a bit of stainless steel for the pin of the rivet I've clamped it in the vise and I'm just going to rivet the top end over first only trouble with doing it like this is it's probably going to affect the temper in the in the blade um, if I was going to do a lot of these I'd probably end up doing it with mild steel rivets or lower grade rivets so you could almost do them cold so you wouldn't have to uh, damage it but anyway I've done that I'm going to cut the other cut the end off and do the other side as this is just a one off I'm not too worried about affecting the temper in the blade obviously if you're going to do it to any degree you'd, uh, you really wouldn't want to damage the temper so I would have to do it 
different. I haven't got enough hands here. I uh, could really do with another hand. So we've got that hot and you can see how much that's affected the blade. Luckily it's only at the handle end at the moment but you can see the, the colours moving down the handle. Which isn't good but I say it's a one off I'm not going to worry too much. I could always reheat and temper the, the whole lot um, with the handle on because it wouldn't worry the handle. In fact, that was probably what I might do if I did another one. Just put it all together, then heat treat it. But we'll see. See what happens. So there we go. Got it all riveted up. Go and cool it out. All right, we've got it cooled out. And it's rock solid. So what I'm going to do is just put a nut on there. Put the rivet over it so that the rivets through the nut and then just give it a few taps on the top I can't unfortunately turn it over and do the other way but it's that's already loosened it but it's still a little bit tight and I'm not sure whether it's tight on the rivet or whether it's actually tight where it wants to turn up against the the top of the handle because that's there is like sort of that's what's causing the, the thing to stick I'm not sure anyway I'm going to play about with that free it off and I'll show you it once it's done right I freed it off um, and while I brushed it up and I think it looks quite nice very rustic, rough and ready. I've left it purposely rough. Um, I think that sort of adds to its charm. Um, the blade is about two and three quarters long from there to there, which is probably about right for our country. I'm not sure. Might just be legal. And it folds up quite nicely. This down here doesn't sit in that groove really. So that was a complete waste of time, that groove. I wouldn't bother doing that at all. Oh, look at that, I've just nicked myself. I, I, I put an edge on that blade, and I wish I hadn't now. That's really sort of just nicked it when that closed. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, that groove in the, in the uh, bottom there, waste of time. But as you can see, it all folds up quite nicely. And I'm pretty pleased with that. That would be a nice little everyday sort of carry knife, stick in your pocket that bleeding all over the place and that opens up quite nicely and it's quite firm blood all over the blade and I think that would be quite handy various little jobs, cutting string, opening bags opening packets so I'll leave you to have a little look at it Right, I'm back at home. I'm going to have to do a little follow-up on this. Um, after I'd finished at the workshop and put all the camera away and everything or other, um, having already cut myself once, um, just handling it, I cut myself again. Not very badly, but I just noticed that I just kept catching the blade. And the reason was it was sticking up at the top here. Sorry, it's not focused very well, but the end was just stuck up. And every time you handled it, you consequently were, were touching the blade. So what I've done, I've tweaked it about a bit with the, the gas torch. And it, now you can see it sits really flush. Really nice and tight. I don't know if you can see, let's if I can get it to focus properly. Let's have a look. So there's nothing sticking out. It's much, much tighter. You'd be hard pushed to catch yourself on that now. But what I would do, in hindsight, if I was going to make another one, um, I wouldn't put the kink in this side, here. You can see there's a kink there. 
to, to mo move the, the blade over, I'd leave it straight so that the blade could sit flush and either put the kink in this side or what's probably even better is put the kink in the end so that um, both the sides, this side and the other side, look completely straight. So the blade goes down. Um, but anyway, let's say hindsight's a wonderful thing. But it works quite nicely. Something else I didn't manage to say was that although carbon um, mild steel hasn't got a lot of carbon in it, it does have some, and consequently you can harden it. So what I did with this is from about here all the way around to there, the last sort of third of it, heated to critical, held it tight up this end, and then plunged it in water. And what that does is it, it gives it a spring. It doesn't harden it so much that it's going to break, but it just makes it springy. And now, as you can see, if I can keep my fingers out of the way, when you go to close it, it actually pings shut. That's the, just purely on the tension in the, in the spring, uh, or in the steel. And it also holds it open, because it's, it's got that tension in there to keep it, to keep it open. And it's obviously not going to do it now because I've gone past it. But it's it's quite a good tip actually for mild steel. You can make it springy. And there you go. See if it'll do it again. There you go. It springs shut. So anyway, I had to give you that little um, update. But uh, I'm still really happy with it. And it slips nicely in your pocket. So anyway, thanks for watching.